Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. Today I'm going to break down another pit in the Mineland Wildlife Area. It is a pit I fished actually yesterday and today is January 15th. So I fished it on January 14th of 2023, depending on when you guys are watching this video. I want to break it down for you because it's fresh on my mind because I was just in there. So I seen where everything was, kind of brought it all back to me. It's a pit that I go way back on um, from many, many years ago. Before I get into that, um, as usual, if you guys would, um, if you just like the video, if you guys like the content, biggest thing is subscribing to the channel, trying to grow the channel, trying to hit that 1,000. Um, actually, the next goal is 500 subscribers. We're at 350, I do believe, almost 360. So we're right there. I've jumped up a lot. We was just at 150 a couple weeks ago. So we're jumping up really fast. I appreciate all you guys watching. Okay, let's jump into the pit. I'm going to break down is south number 20. It's not the one all the way to the south, but you'll see it here on the map. It is the one south and then the one that runs to the west road. So it runs straight west there, and you just follow the pit road that goes back in there, and it'll be on your west side. It's got a very good boat ramp, um, an amazing boat ramp, actually. Lots of parking for any big boats. You can put um, giant boats in there, little boats in there. You could probably put a ski boat in there if you wanted to. It's got a very, very nice ramp in it. So no problems with the ramp, no problem putting in. The water is stained. Not real dirty-ish. It don't get real dirty. It don't get real clean. It just stays kind of a, a dirty stain. Not real clean, though. It never gets real clean that I have seen it before, anyway. It is a pit with lots of shad in it. Um, mainly when I fished in there, that is what I catch them on is shad-related baits. Um, pretty much any time I have been in that pit, it is a shad-related bait that I have caught um, those fish on. Okay, so let's um, jump into this here. I'm going to break it down into three sections. The red is going to be area number one, which is going to be the area furthest to the east. And then the blue is going to be the middle section. And then the yellow is going to be the furthest west section. So I'm going to break it down into those three sections there and break down each section where the best areas are. Okay, the first area furthest to the east, which is the red section, um, if you look right there at the red, that is the most important part of this pit. So right there, there's a tree and some brush out there. And this goes back to the first time I ever fished this pit years ago. Um, I believe it was 2005, might be wrong on that. It's It was closed down for some time and then they opened it back up and me and my cousin went in there. And I was throwing, we fished all the way around the pit. We actually started and went around towards from the boat ramp and we went south and then went around the south bank and then went west on the south bank it came back around the north bank and then we was coming back around that north bank and you'll see a bluff there here in the later photos we came around right there and i was throwing actually a black neon power worm is what it was i don't even think they make it anymore seven inch black neon power worm and we was just catching um Oh, decent fish in there. I don't remember so long ago how many was catching. And I hooked into this fish. I was with my cousin. And I was throwing the black neon power worm. Because back then we were kids. We didn't have a whole lot to fish with. That's all we had left laying on the bottom of the boat. So I was like, oh, crap, let's throw this. And I don't know who's ever thrown it. But I had it on there. That's like kind of a, you know, black neon. It's black. Got neon on one side. So it was a shad imitator. And I hooked into this fish. And he's like, how big is it? I was like, well, I think it's about the same size. And then about that time, it jumped, and it was every bit. I mean, it had a mouth about that big on it. I might be exaggerating, but I mean, this was many years ago when we were kids. We seen this thing jump, and we're just like, oh, my gosh. So it was definitely 10 pounds. I estimate it to be somewhere in the 12 to 14-pound range from what I seen of it, and I didn't just see it once. We got it all the way actually to the boat. And for some reason, we were kids, and my cousin, we didn't have a net in the boat. We didn't a little scamp. My cousin actually grabbed the line, and it didn't break the line. It bent the hook straight is how big the fish was. It actually bent the hook straight, and the hook popped out. That is how big this fish was. So that is why I love this pit. Um, 
it's one of my favorite pits. Just, uh, just see that memory every time I go in there, you know, trying to get that fish again. And I'd heard rumors around that same time that another guy had missed one um, about that same size in there right after it had opened up. So they live in there. They're difficult to find. The biggest one we have actually, I've seen come out of there myself personally is six pounds, one ounce. So there's big fish in there. So we went in there yesterday, but look in there. We caught two yesterdays. Well, we caught them. I'll get into that. Um, the red is where I missed that big one. So always hit that tree out there. It's off the bank a little bit. Um, the water's up. It's kind of hard to find. The water's down. It's still a little harder to find. It sets in about 15 foot of water out there. It's about 10 foot off the bank, 15 foot off the bank, somewhere in there. And I actually hooked that fish because I accidentally cast too far out in front of the boat at that time. We was just back a long time ago. We just fished the bank. I made a bad cast too far off the bank. The wind blew it and that's blew it off the bank there and got me in that tree. And I, that's where we learned that tree was later when we got a fish finder. We learned that tree was out there. And then the yellow is a good rip rap bank. It's good all year. That is where I caught one of the two fish yesterday. Um, the first uh, I did catch the first fish on a Berkeley Stunner Shad Filet as the color. It is the new Berkeley Stunner. If you have not tried it, I love the Berkeley Stunner uh, mixed with the Mega Bass 110. Um, just whichever the deeper fish for the Berkeley Stunner works better. If it's stained water, the Shad Filet color, I really like it. Um, you can look it up on there, but it is um, a shaddish color. It's got a blue back. It's got yellow kind of chartreuse just down the middle of it. I forget what's on the bottom of it, but it's a really good color. That's my favorite color in the Berkeley Stunna, and it's only, I think it's like $12, $13. It's about half the price of the Mega Bass, but those two mixed together seem to be a good combination. I found out. You, I got a video on that, the jerkbait combination. The purple is good all year round. Um, best in the spring, that is where I caught the biggest one yesterday. I was actually, so it's good in the summer, or in the winter too. We just had a sonar. I caught it on a 3.5 inch um, big hammer in silver side color. I'll put that in the link for you guys. So, and we seen them sitting there on the graph. We just had a sonar though, and we could see the returns on them. But he, we had to hurry up, and that was it, toward the end of the pit, and we had to get out of there. He had to hurry up and get back. A buddy of mine did, had to get back home, so... We didn't spend a whole lot of time on those fish, but had we had Fred, I wish I would have taken the A rig out there and I forgot to take it with me. I was in his boat, so I didn't have all my stuff with me. Wish I would have took it out there because they was out there in the middle. We could see the arches of the bass out there schooled up. And that's where I caught that one on that jerk bait. And I think he missed one there. I can't remember. But I know they were out there. We seen them on the grass. So that's good all year round. I'm, I, in the summertime in the pit tournament we had, Back over the summer, a guy missed one. He said a four or five pounder back in that area right there. So that is a good area all year. Pretty much um, in the spring, it's good too. So look in there um, where the beds are, the green right there um, is good in the summer. And then the green dots right there in the purple look for spawners. So look for beds back in there. It gets kind of shallow and they'll, they'll, they'll bed up in there. For your bed and bass, like I said, you watch your stick worms. A magnum finesse worm works really good. A big hammer salt shaker worm works really good for the bed and bass. Um, you can throw it on a shaky head works good. Or you can throw it on a split shot. Throwing it on a drop shot works really good on a bed too. It gets it kind of, you don't want a real long leader on it. Just a lighter weight, just to kind of get it up off the bottom so they can see it a little bit more to agitate those fish. Um, Texas rigs. Um, crawls work good on beds. Um, even the ones that are not crawls, like uh, brush hogs, work really good on beds too. Just something to make the bass mad when they see it on their bed and they try to pick it up and move it and get it out of there, away from their eggs. Now the second area in the middle here, in the blue, right there you'll see the red. And right there, the red I got running out there is a long point. You want to hit that. That is good all year round. Summertime, wintertime, just in the wintertime, you want to be further off of it, but they'll sit out in the deeper water on the, the north side of it. I mean, the wind's blowing on it good. They could be on the back side, but just fish all around there. Um, throw a crankbait on it all year round. It works better in this early springtime. A wiggle wart rock crawler um, style of uh, crankbait works really good. Uh, if you guys see them, a technique on the wobble head when the water warms up into the 50s. Um, high 40s, that wobblehead technique works really good when that crankbait bite is working good too. 
with the 3.5 inch big hammer in the red colors or whatever color you want, just drag it along the bottom like you would a wiggle wart. Works really great. The blue on the north, that's kind of a bluff wall in there. I never really done good any other months than the summer right there. For some reason, it's just the summer I've done good on that bluffier bank right there. Now the yellow right there is a good lay down and tree in the water right there. And I fish up in it and I fish off of it. And that's where I caught um, my fish pretty much. Um, I think we caught four fish when we was in there in June in the pit tournament is how many fish we actually caught. And two of them came right there in that area, that tree. And then one came further back where I told you I missed the big one. And then the other one came um, in that uh, green area, I believe it was. Yes, the green area that I was talking about. That was good in the summer, the green area in the first section there. So now let's go to the third area. This is the yellow area. Now this is the far west end. The green is best in the springtime because they move up in there to spawn. So it's best in the springtime. Um, it's good early in the summertime when they're feeding and it can be good in the wintertime when the water starts warming up to it. The sun's been out for a few days and that shallow water warms up. It warms up faster than shallow water does and they'll move up there and feed. So don't be afraid to go in there in the wintertime all because it's shallower. Um, look for beds all out there where the green dots are, look for bed and bass in the springtime when the water is um, 60 or 58 to 60, up to 70 degrees right in there is when the bass like to spawn. They get ready to spawn. Um, the yellow is a good rocky bank right there. Look for them to move up on that in the wintertime when the sun's out for that warmth. And then it's good in the summertime too, in the morning right there along. That's what makes that area so good too, is there's some bigger, I think it used to be riprap years ago, but it's all grown up now. Um, the blue right there on the south bank, I've done good all year round there. And then the red on the north, there's some good laydowns and there's that small little point right there that is all real good. Okay, so now let's get in to the lures I like to throw in there. I'm always back there in the summer. I caught three fish on an old Norman. This was in June in the pit tournament. And I caught three fish on... Like I said, it's shad colors. What Shad anything imitation is what I do best on in there. And I caught them on a crankbait. Three of them on a crankbait. It was a Norman. There was an old, I forget. I don't even know what model it was, but it was a 12-foot diver. They don't make it anymore. And I, I love that. I don't remember what color it was either, but I love that style of crankbait. And then we caught our other fourth keeper on a big hammer ringer worm. I might have caught two on a ringer worm and two on a crankbait. I remember we did catch one for sure on the ringer worm. And that was in the magic bug color, which imitates a shad. So, and then yesterday I caught the first fish on the Berkeley Stun and the Shad Filet. And then I caught the second fish on the, the Big Hammer 3.5 inch uh, swim bait on a, I was throwing that on a 3 8 ounce head because I was reeling it down deeper. So that's what, it, I want to eat shad anything in there. Um, buddy of mine, he was throwing yesterday all bottom baits. I did throw a jig a little bit. I didn't get anything on the jig. Um, he was throwing a shaky head, a Ned rig. Couldn't get bit on anything of those. He tried to jig a little bit. He tried a Texas rig a little bit, a Texas rig crawl, a big bite bait, yo mama. Couldn't get nothing on it. So if you go into that pit, throw shad style baits. I know the biggest fish that has been caught out of there was six pounds, one ounce. And that was caught actually on a, a five inch uh, bait hammer is what it was caught on. So if they love swim baits in there, I wish I would have taken the Alabama rig in there would be a good one to throw in the winter time to throw in those areas where we've seen them schooled up and they would have ate it, but I didn't get it out there, I forgot it. But that works really good with a 3.5 inch big hammer or a three inch big hammer. Um, a flash mob junior is what I would recommend for that, it's smaller more compact. Um, it's very popular to throw in the A-Rig. I'm not a big A-Rig guy, but I am trying to learn it more because it's just magical in the winter time. The bass absolutely love it. I'm more of a jerk bait guy. I like to throw the jerk baits or the swim baits, but the swim baits when the water gets too cold, they don't like to eat those too well. And then with the jerk bait wise, 
I like to throw the Berkeley Stunna um, mixed with the Mega Bass Vision 110. Now, I throw the Vision 110 when the water temps are warmer, which I eat the Berkeley Stunner too when they're deeper, but it seems like that the Berkeley or the Mega Bass 110 doesn't work as well in the colder temperatures under 40 degrees for some reason. That's when you want to go with your Smithwick Rogues. You want to go with that Berkeley Stunner, works real good. Another one is a Rip Stop, works really good. I'm a Husky Jerk, works really good in that. I um, an x wrap works good too, but that's usually shallower water. You can't really get down deep enough to them with the x wrap But the Mega Bass just has a little too much action until it gets about over 40 degrees, and they eat the Mega Bass a little better. So hopefully this helps you guys. Um, if you guys go to this pit, it helps you understand exactly um, where everything's at. And I want to break the pit down here. Um, I average 4.42 fish per trip in there. I meant to do this at the beginning of the video. I forgot to throw that in there. That, that is the average amount of bass we catch in there. Um, between one or two of us is 4.42. So it's not a high percentage area, um, should I say, to catch fish. It's 18 acres. There's two miles of shoreline to fish in it. And six pounds, one ounce is the biggest bass. But the biggest bass ratio, I say, well, it's higher, but I haven't caught an 18 inch out of there for quite a few trips in there. So I mean, but I know they're in there. It's just getting them to bite because I've seen other guys catch them out of there as well. So, I mean, they're in there. It's just a matter of getting them to bite, like I said. So hopefully that'll help you guys. Um, this one, unfortunately, is not in the pit tournaments next year. But at least if you guys are looking to go out and catch fish, this will help you guys out, um, help you what lures to throw in there. Um, another one is, uh, you know, the big hammer ringworm. I mentioned it, throwing it, seven-inch power worm works in there as well but uh, mainly stick to your crankbaits any shad baits um, swim baits when you go into that pit anything that imitates shad is what you want to be throwing spinner baits work good in there because the stained water in the colder months once it starts warming up in the spring i've um, never done real good like i said with the jigs or anything and they just seem to eat shad and be focused on shad in that pit and, i mean somebody else might go in there and slay them on um, you know crawl um, imitation baits or bluegill imitation baits, but I've just never been able to do that in there. They always seem to be related to shad no matter the time of year I've been in there. So, all right, hopefully it helps you guys. Thank you.